So I was talking with one of my students the other day. We were kind of going over some of the stuff that he has to work on, and he mentioned storytelling. And I thought it would be really good for me to do a video about this because he says that my storytelling is really good. <laughs> and uh, uh, It is. I don't, I don't really talk much about this on the, on the channel, but I am actually an award-winning public speaker. I've won at least half a dozen awards doing that sort of stuff when it comes to storytelling, humorous speaking, motivation. Um, I've, I've won awards in, in that category. And I've translated what I've learned from public speaking into real conversations, which is what I feel the most comfortable in. If you're able to tell a really, really good story, Whatever anybody's doing, they're thinking about you and your story. They're totally captivated in. I mean, you, you watch the really good storytellers and the room goes silent. Everyone is totally engaged. Everyone's totally captivated by what he's saying. And you can bet there's going to be one or two girls in those audience that want to sleep with that guy. So if you want to be that guy rather than some guy who's just telling a story that people kind of get bored, they kind of start looking away and they look for other things to do or just wait for you to finish so they can t say their thing, you should watch this video. Watch this video and learn how to tell a good story. Okay, so the first tip that I'm going to give about telling a story is bring your audience in. Bring the, uh, the listener or whoever you're talking to, bring them into the story. Now, how do you do this? Well, an easy way to do it is just say, let's say you're telling a story about you going through the airport. And you say, imagine me at the airport. I got my bag. I'm walking really fast because I'm late. I'm a little flustered and nervous. I got my jacket on. I barely have my belt done because I just went through security. You can see how you're starting to picture this as I'm walking through because, first of all, I just told you to imagine it. And if you tell somebody, then they're going to start picturing it. Then you can describe it. Now, after you start describing it, I would pick one or two of the senses to engage with. So I told you what I looked like, I told you how I was feeling, and then maybe I could have added in maybe the sounds of the announcer going off and he was saying that my flight was departing in five minutes and I had, you know, the, the, it was going to take me ten minutes to get to my gate. So all those things bring the audience member into the story. So you can say, imagine me at the airport, or you can say, have you ever been to the airport and you've been late for a flight? Everyone's been in that particular scenario, so they can imagine themselves in that, and if they can imagine themselves in that, they can imagine themselves in your story. The other thing you should start doing is bring in your emotions more. Too much, I see guys when they're telling a story, they just do this monotone thing where they just tell the facts. You just say, I was late for my flight, I walked really, really fast, I got there in time. That's a lame-ass story, okay? A good story might be, dude, I, I was really flustered. I had just made it through security. I was putting, tucking my pants in, and I was, like, looking at my flight, and I was thinking, oh, shit, I have to be there in five minutes. Five minutes? I have ten minutes to go, and I didn't think I was going to be able to make it, so I'm running as fast as I can through the airport, knocking kids over. Like, you can see how this story is a lot more exciting because I'm telling you what's going through my head as it's happening. And uh, the average story, people don't really care so much about the content, but they care about the emotion emotions that it's making the person feel. If you want your audience member to feel a certain emotion, to get a certain reaction from your story, you need to bring in those emotions because whatever you feel, they're going to feel. So they should see it in your face. They should see it when you're telling a story. Have passion. I don't know if you can tell when I'm telling stories on this channel, but I have a lot of passion for what I'm talking about, and it comes through. You can see it. When I'm talking, you can see it in my facial expressions, my gestures, my body language. I'm very into the story. My eyes get wide. Sometimes they lower and they squint. Sometimes I'm smiling. Sometimes I'm, whatever is going through my head in the story, I'm recreating that with my body. And so there's not only uh, the audio component where they're hearing the words, but there's also the visual component where they're seeing me do that. That's why my videos are probably going to do a lot better than the audio version, although I will be coming out with some, uh, some audio stuff as well too, so stay tuned for that, you guys. The other thing too is have a point. Have a point to your story. So this is probably, this is a big thing that people get wrong especially a lot of the girls that I talk to. Like, sometimes you'll tell a story and you'll think it'd be really awesome and then they'll tell a story and it's just like, it's just like the worst story you've ever heard in your life. Like, how could somebody think that that story was cool? The reason why a lot of those stories suck is because they don't really have a point to them. Have a point. If your story doesn't have a beginning, middle, and end, it's probably not going to be a good story. So sometimes what I like to do is... <laughs> you'll be telling a story sometimes and you'll realize halfway through that it sucks. If that happens to me... What I'll usually do is I'll usually pick one like little lesson or something at the end and I'll be like, well, that's why I never order with a white shirt on or something like that. And it'll be just kind of like this, ah, kind of funny thing where now they know the story's end and at least there was some sort of point to it. 
if you kind of drag on and you don't know where your story is heading or why you're telling that story, people are going to start to stop paying attention. People are going to lose interest. They're going to be thinking, okay, is this guy going to finish is, so I can say my stuff? Like, it's not going to be a good story. So when you're thinking about the story, think about like, okay, what's the beginning here? If you're telling a story how you met your friend Jimmy, okay, maybe a good starting point would be, okay, I got invited to this party. Then you go to the party, then you meet Jimmy, then you and Jimmy have this awesome night together, and that's how you met Jimmy. That's the whole story. It had a beginning, middle, and end. The point of it was how you met Jimmy. The other thing you could do too is start with a baiting sentence. Don't just start a sentence where it was like, I have a story, here's my story. Or, do you want to hear what happened to me yesterday? That's, that's fine. Um, you can say that, but a better way might be saying, dude, I almost died yesterday. Or, or I hate celery. Some ridiculous, silly statement. People are like, what? Like, they're going to want an explanation to that. So start with these baiting sentences, and then people are going to be really interested to find to, to hear an explanation. This kind of relates back to my previous point, which is have a point to your story. If you have that point, if you start with, like, the ending almost, which is like, like a Quentin Tarantino film where people see the ending, uh, and then they work your way back, the reason why they're interested in the movie the whole time is because they want to see how it got to that point. They want to see how... Um, like in Kill Bill, when she's like almost dead at the beginning, they want to see what led to that. How did that happen? What's she going to do after that? Start with a baiting sentence. The problem with this, though, is that sometimes people use this too much. And so, I don't know if you've seen the YouTube channels where like every single video is basically clickbait in the title. They, they use this, the, the baiting sentence. They use this all the time. And... Eventually, you watch the video, and it's just like a normal video, and so you start not trusting them anymore. You start thinking, okay, well, if they're just going to say that, every, no story is going to be actually interesting. It's just going to be a normal story. So don't overuse this, but if you can start with a baiting sentence and maintain that interest throughout the story, it's going to be that much better. You're going to get people interested right from the get-go. Okay, some things to avoid. The first thing to avoid is repetition. Don't repeat words too much. Don't repeat phrases too much. Try and... Don't, don't repeat... Don't even repeat your tonality or uh, the, the way you're telling the story. So vary it up. Story needs to have some sort of variety. If you say it in the same monotone way, if you're giving the same facial expression, if you're telling the same, using the same words or the same phrases, people are going to start to tune out. They're going to stop listening to you. So vary it up. I don't know if you can tell, but I vary up my facial expressions, the emotions, the gestures that I'm doing. I try not to reuse the same words or phrases again and again, although you can make that part of your story too. I just don't reuse things a whole lot. The other thing too is, I'm gonna mention this because this is a channel about how to get girls, but back in the day when Mystery was teaching, he used to say, you need to put a bunch of DHVs in your stories. Okay, f for the most part, when I see you guys doing this, uh, it just seems like you're being really try hard and you're bragging too much. So don't try, I know it's tempting to try and make your story seem like it was you know, a badass thing, like, then, uh, then this, you know, this stripper wanted to have sex with me, but I wasn't really interested in her because I wanted to go to this yacht party with my good friend who's friends with the owner of Gucci. So we got on the boat free, no big deal, and then we went on this boat and we're partying, we're drinking, and I don't know, I, I can drink a lot. Like, a lot of people think they can keep up with me, but nobody can. Like, you see how this story, you want to shoot me in the face after hearing it. So, Try not to brag too much. I know a lot of you guys, you think you're not bragging that much, but <laughs> some of you are when you're doing it. So you want to make sure that you're telling the story confidently. You want to say it with purpose, with passion. You don't have to brag. In fact, I think being self-deprecating in your stories can actually be a good thing. It shows confidence, the fact that you're able to, uh, to say those things and still have and still have the same level of emotion and confidence when you're talking. It's the guys who you hear that are, that they, like, like the story that I just told you before. Does that guy sound confident? No, he sounds pretty insecure. So the way you show confidence, and this is another thing to avoid, is don't look at your audience so much. If you're, what I mean is, okay, that's, I shouldn't have worded it that way because you want to have really, really good eye contact when you're telling the story, like I am now, but you don't want to look at them and hope that they get a reaction. So if you tell a joke and you look at everybody and you're like waiting for everybody to laugh and fucking nobody does, <laughs> it's going to start getting kind of awkward. If the audience feels pressured, like they have to react or they have to be really engaged and you're not really engaged with your own story enough to, um, to be absorbed in it, that you don't need that, it's going to be uncomfortable and people are going to start to hope that the story is over because you're expecting something from them. Get absorbed in your own story, be with the emotions, and take the audience along for the ride. Don't be looking to them to try and uh, get a certain reaction or something like that. That's not the, 
That's not how a good storyteller does it. And the last thing that I'm going to leave you guys with is that try, don't, don't just tell a story and have zero audience participation. So at the beginning, I gave you a bunch of things that you can do to start with the audience. You say, have you ever been to the airport? Have you ever, or sorry, have you been late to a flight? Or have you ever done this? Or imagine me do like that sort of stuff. It, it, you're bringing the audience in. You're, 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 t- you're talking with them, captivating. Again, you're not looking for a reaction, but you're, you're, you're getting them to participate a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll check in with them. So I'll, if I'm telling a story about the airport, I'll be like, I'll tell you, you know, how I'm running through really quickly and how I barely made it to my flight. And then I'll say, you know, when you get to the, the, the ticket attendant and they ask you like a million questions or they want to search your bag and you're like already running late. Like at the fact, just the fact that I said, have you ever, or I do a little, you know, a little audience questioning there. That helps them bring them in and um, make sure that they're paying attention and also make sure that what, the story that you're telling is relatable to them. I don't want to tell a story about skiing for 10 minutes to a group of people that have never been skiing or never seen snow. Probably if they've never seen any of those things, my story sucked to them because they don't understand it. So make sure you're checking in with the audience to make sure that they know where you're coming from. And if they don't, then you might have to go back and explain a few things. But the fact that you had you go back and explain to them and you're on the same page, they're still going to be interested. But it's the, it's the part where people ignore the audience too much where they're, um, they start telling a story that nobody understands but them. And that's where people get, get into trouble. So make sure you're checking in with the audience but not looking for them to react to you. Okay, cool. Well, that's all I have to say about this, you guys. If you made anything, then consider subscribing. Come out with videos like this every single week. If you're interested in my weekly one-on-one mentoring program, I go over stuff like this, how to get girls, the girl that you want in life. Shoot me an email, thesingleguy2017 at gmail.com. Thanks a lot. Good luck out there.